those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Those words stood on a plaque above Jim Jones' head at Jonestown, right above his throne. And you can see them above Jeff Jarrett's head right now. That's a really overly dramatic way of introducing this video, but those words are so fitting. When you look at Global Force Wrestling, it really does seem that the people involved don't remember the past. It seems that Jeff Jarrett has forgotten what happened 12 years ago with TNA. Or maybe he's just hoping we don't remember. Global Force Wrestling is repeating a lot of the same things that TNA did, right down to the people who are involved. Who's involved? Well, there's TNA founder Jeff Jarrett. He's the founder of Global Force Wrestling. He was the visionary behind TNA. He's the visionary and driving force behind Global Force Wrestling. Who else is involved? We know his wife Karen is involved, and it's really unfair to bring her into this because her only experience is with TNA, but we don't know how involved in Global Force Wrestling she really is. She's in the videos, and as his wife, she'd almost have to be involved given what a personal project Jeff says this is. But at the end of the day, her only experience was with TNA. There's Hermie Sadler. He's a NASCAR driver who's brought into TNA early on to give it to mainstream appeal. He also ran co-branded house shows with his independent group, UWF. UWF TNA house shows were run during the early days of TNA on Spike TV. So, his main involvement with wrestling was with TNA. There's Kevin Sullivan. Don't worry, it's not the Kevin Sullivan who booked WCW. It's the Kevin Sullivan who produced TNA TV shows for eight years. He also produced All Wheels Wrestling, that TNA spinoff that was going to be on Speed Network, or Speed Channel, whatever Fox Sports 1 used to be. So yeah, he was also involved in TNA. There's one person who I don't think was involved in TNA, and that's the producer of The Biggest Loser. He's somehow involved in this project. Probably the reality TV show angle that everyone seems to think will pop up when Global Force Wrestling gets a TV slot. We don't really know exactly what they're going to get, because despite Jeff Jarrett telling us that he's bringing us along for the journey, that he wants us to join the Force, there's very little information on this company. There's really just a lot of buzzwords. We hear about fresh, innovative new ideas. But really, they're just buzzwords right now. In fact, that's what the Global Force Wrestling site is. We're told what's trending on their front page instead of the news. Buzzwords. Fresh, innovative ideas. Like their global talent search. Well, what is their global talent search? We have Jeff Jarrett's database of 500 wrestlers, which to me just reminds me of Mitt Romney and his binder full of women. It doesn't really matter if you have a bunch of names. What are you going to do with them? Do you have the eye to pick out the wheat from the chaff? Are you going to tell lame old jokes about binders full of women? Well, let's look at Jeff Jarrett's eye for talent. In 2002, he went on a global talent search for TNA. He was touring with WWA and he used that as an excuse to scout for talent. He looked for talent all over the world in different capacities. In WWA, he was really impressed with Nathan Jones, who you may be familiar with from his stint in WWE. He was really impressed with a talent who was with New Japan Pro Wrestling, too. Jerry Jarrett's diary describes him as a 7'3 Indian wrestler. At that time, he went by the name Giant Singh. Now you might know him as Great Kali. Those are the kind of talents that Jeff Jarrett was impressed by during his last global talent search. In Jerry Jarrett's diary about TNA, you don't really hear about the AJ Styles. You don't hear about the Christopher Daniels, the Low Keys. In fact, after all of the big name talent couldn't be signed by their initial advertising deadlines, they had no plan B. Jerry Jarrett even says, we need to go to plan B, but we don't have one. They'd spent so much time negotiating with Ultimate Warrior, Randy Savage, Sid, Sting, Scott Steiner, Ken Shamrock, and China, that 
they didn't have a plan B. So it's hard to believe that Jeff Jarrett is the guy to go out there and look for talent. But maybe he is. The evidence just doesn't seem to be pointing in that direction. It doesn't seem like this is a new fresh idea either. It seems like any company would do this. TNA did it. Lots of companies scout for talent. That's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to look for unsigned talent because if they could just sign signed talent, it wouldn't be a problem. If you could get John Cena, well, you'd have John Cena. Instead, you have to look under every rock. Jeff Jarrett says there's more talent on the indies than ever before. He talks about how there's been all of this time to cultivate talent on the indies. But that doesn't seem to be what a lot of other people are saying. The fans I see posting, the experts I see talking about the indies these days, they talk about how the WWE is signing so many people. NXT is full of yesterday's indie talent. They're full of a lot of today's indie talent. The WWE roster is full of a lot of indie talent. The indies are restocking talent. There's good talent out there, but they're also signed. Adam Cole is signed. Ricochet is signed. Where are these unsigned talents? Again, Jeff Jarrett says that they just... They're out there. We haven't heard about them, but he's found them. So maybe he has. Just don't claim that this is an innovative, fresh concept. Don't try and promote it as something new. It makes it seem like you don't know what you're talking about. And the problem with Jeff Jarrett is... When he talks... He doesn't seem like he knows what he's talking about. Here's what he said about what makes GFW unique. It just won't be a bunch of wrestling matches. We have exciting announcements to come. TNA or WWE right now is match after match after match. Global Force Wrestling is not going to do that. There will be matches, but there will be a lot more. And a lot more variety placed into the actual events that will be really innovative. Fresh. Now just think about this. If you're a wrestling fan, is your complaint about WWE or TNA that they're match after match after match? If you've seen TNA recently, does match after match after match sound like a description of TNA's television? No, it doesn't. So once again, Jeff Jarrett just sounds like he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, Maybe it's unfair. Maybe he is promoting something fresh here. Maybe this, this new concept won't be match after match after match. Maybe this is something new. Wait, what was he saying in 2002 about TNA? Quote, We want to have a great variety wrestling show. We're going to have comedy characters, serious characters, brawling characters, and plenty of TNA. We're going to have celebrities, which brings a public awareness when they get involved in storylines. It's going to be anything but a traditional show. Yeah. It's not exactly the same thing, but in both cases he's saying, We're doing something different. We have this great new concept. Wonderful. Why does he think it'll be successful? Does he seem knowledgeable there? Well, he cites wrestling... Being on the verge of a new boom. What's his evidence for that? Well, when he was asked recently, he didn't seem to have any idea. He said that business is cyclical. Not just the wrestling business, but business in general. If you look back from a historical perspective, businesses always go up and down. Not just the wrestling business, just the, I, you know, and, and the world economy, the U.S. economy, the Canadian economy. But, but I just believe that the, the industry is healthy enough that, that uh, you know. And then he cited the WWE Network. I don't know if you've remembered this, but recently WWE's network subscriptions came out below most estimates. It seems like they may not even be able to meet their 1 million subscriber projection for the end of the year. WWE has been giving out lots of free stuff to get people to sign up. It doesn't seem like the network is doing as well as they think. Well, Jeff Jarrett also cites WWE's new TV deal. And this interview, as you can tell, came out after the new TV deal was announced. 
Just listen to what he has to say. And, and, and you know, they just re up their rights fees and, you know, their stock dropped and all that. But who in the world would, you know, it, it, it's crazy enough to think that the, the WWE, I don't know, what is it, a 60%, 50% increase in right, 40%, whatever it is. That's right. He doesn't seem to have a clear idea of what WWE is actually making on their new deal. He just thinks it's good. That's because he was locked into these statements before these numbers came out. He said there would be a boom period back when GFW was originally announced. He cited the network and this new TV deal, and then they ended up being under expectations. That new boom period seems to be further away than ever. But he won't go back on his words. He doesn't even seem to know what his biggest competitor is doing. Granted, he's a busy man, but shouldn't you, as a wrestling promoter, know the biggest deal in WWE history that caused their stock to come crashing down? Shouldn't you know what that figure is? And shouldn't you know not to say that it's a good thing? Jeff Jarrett doesn't. And that's one of the problems here. All we have is rhetoric. For the journey we're supposed to be on with him, for all of these people who've joined the force, we don't know very much about it. He tells us we're going every step of the way with him, but we don't know much about Global Force Wrestling. We don't know much about these innovative ideas. All we have are these vague statements he makes that make him sound clueless. We know that they're involved with a lot of people who are involved in TNA. We know that some of the people he may be involved with were involved with TNA. It's silly to point out Toby Keith, but he was the person who was going to be buying TNA with Jeff Jarrett. And, well, he was involved with TNA thanks to Jeff Jarrett. One of the people in the Journey videos is Scott Demore. Again, someone who's been involved with TNA historically. It just seems like Jeff is revisiting the past. If you look at the GWF I'm sorry, GFW website. I even think that name is bad. It just doesn't flow off my tongue. I always want to say GWF. But anyway, if you look at the GFW website, there's all these graphics of Hermie Sadler and the Global Force Wrestling logo on his car. This might bring up memories of WCW to you and the WCW car, but it brings up memories of TNA to me because early on, they put their logo on Hermie Sadler's car. All of these things didn't work 12 years ago. They didn't work 5 years ago. They don't work now. And yet he keeps clinging to them. He clings to any bit of mainstream attention he can get. He clings to it all. And he promotes it endlessly, trying to seem relevant. And it just comes off sad. It comes off the same way they did it in TNA.